guys, it's Shelly here. Welcome to my channel and thank you for joining me today. On today's video, I have your favourite video of the month and that is my completed pages for March 2024. And I've had a good colouring month. When I say that, I mean I've really enjoyed the pages I've coloured. I have got a few more pages than I did in February, I think. And um, I've got a good mix of pages. So I've got some winter pages which I was finishing off and I've started a little bit of spring colouring. I wish I'd started, I'd finished off my winter pages in February so I could start my spring pages earlier in the month, but that's absolutely fine. Um, for me, spring and summer sort of blend together in a way anyways, because it's all about the bright colours, the florals, so I have plenty of time to do lots of floral pages if I want. But yeah, let's just get to it. I have a few whips and a few completed pages as well. As always, I'll start with the whips first. And I'm not going to waste too much time on this particular whip. And that is Alessandra Fusi's Mythographic Dream Weaver. And I haven't coloured in it. So if those of you who have been watching my channel, you've seen this for quite a few months now. I just haven't done any more work in this on this page. But hopefully I'll get back into it. I don't even remember what my idea for the flowers were. I just based it with the alcohol markers. And I don't remember what colours I was going to go for. But we'll see when we get to it. Um... But yeah, no work done in that. Um, that's Alessandra Fusi's Mythographic Dreamweaver. I really need to get that page done because as you guys know, I don't tend to do, I have lots of whips on the go, but I don't tend to do start another page in the same book if I have a whip on the go. So until that page is done, I won't be coloring any more pages in this book. So I really do need to get it done. All right. A new whip is from Makiko Inotome's newest book. And this is Seasonal Wreaths of Plants and Friends. So it goes through the season and it's all about the wreaths. Um, so I went straight to the spring section. I did pull this book for winter as well, but never got around to it. Um, and in the spring section, I chose this page. And as you guys will have realized, Easter came early. This page is not done for Easter, but I'm still going to do it, even though it's the Easter eggs. Um, I really found it cute with the paint box and the brushes and the uh, pencils there. Um, so yeah, all I've done is the background with my Albert Duro pencils activated with water to give sort of like a watercolor effect. And that's it. And I don't know if I'll add any more to the background yet, but I really needed to just get into this book. It's always that first step for me in an uncolored new book, especially that I just need to get a bit of color down. So then it gets me inspired and motivated um, to get going in the book properly. So that just doing that little bit of a background now makes me feel like I want to tackle this book. So um, that's Mikiko Inotome's Seasonal Reads of Plants and Friends. And hopefully I'll start coloring that page properly. Um, in April. Then the next whip I have, and you guys may have seen some of these books as my, well, the first book and this book as well, as my um, options that I have for the spring season. So it's really nice that I pulled all those books out ready to go so that I could start tapping into them. And this was one of them. I really, really felt like coloring in this book. It's a coloring heaven, Enchanted Animals Special, and the illustrations are by Kanoko Egusa. She's coming out with a new book apparently at some point soon. Hopefully it's this year. So I'm quite um, excited about that. And she said she's drawing, she's working on it and it's slow, which to me means hopefully it'll not be the only the illustrations in this book. So hopefully it's not just a book on what's all the illustrations she has in the coloring heaven. So hopefully there'll be new ones. So I'm quite excited about that. Um, but yeah, I don't enjoy the colouring heaven paper anymore, but I really like Kanoko Goose's work and I really enjoyed colouring this wreath in this book. Um, absolutely loved it. And so I was so, um, inspired to colour another page and I chose this one. And I absolutely love how it's coming along. I'm just taking it slow. As you guys know, I like to take my time and I'll just get started and colour whatever just comes to me that's why it's so haphazard like I started with the grass then I did those stems of the is it the snowdrop flowers and then I decided I felt like doing the brick wall so I went inside doing the brick wall and that's how I work I just whatever element I'm in the mood to color or a certain color I feel like coloring um that's what I get started with on a page and in this one um my next step I think is going to be the woodwork I feel like coloring that woodwork so the window paint the window frame and the door and maybe that little wheel there so I'm going to start working on the wood 
on I'll probably end up doing the flowers last but um yeah really like how that's coming along I'm just using my Albert Dura pencils I do activate them with water very little water um and then I go over with the pencils dry and that's what I'm working with I love how that that door just looks like it's popping out um yeah so that's Enchanted Animal Special and um, the illustrations are by Kanoko Egusa. And another whip I have from the options I had for the spring season is this book, Maria Trollis, Moon Valley. I've only done one page in this book and I was feeling like colouring this page. I decided to go for this page here. And I've done a How I Colour video on the tulips because I don't know if you guys remember, I think it might it might have been in my um, spring options video where I said I tend to do my flowers pink a lot of the times and I was going to try really hard to deviate from that, to change that and try and do different flowers if possible. Um, and so when I turn to this page, I got an idea of doing these tulips, uh, the tulips like this, and I really like how it's turning out. So I've done a How I Colour video to share with you guys how I've done it. It's a very short video and just to share with you the colour combination. And I love, I'm loving playing with the greens. Um, I'm using my Albert Dura pencils, by the way, guys. Um, I'm activating it with water for certain elements. So not for the petals, for example, but for those leaves at the back, because it's such a large um, area, such a large element. So I'm activating it with water and then going over with my pencils dry. And um, yeah, it's fun playing with the greens to try and differentiate them all. So, and I love that color combination I've done for that particular leaf. It just helps the tulips pop out. But usually I start with the background and I didn't in this, um, in this instance because I was so inspired to color those tulips so I started coloring the tulips um, thinking okay I'll figure out the background later so now that's going to be a challenge because I have no idea what I'm going to do with the background but um, I love how that's turning out I'm really enjoying it haven't been coloring Maria Trolley that often recently so it's nice to get stuck in again so that's Maria Trolley's Moon Valley the next whip is Ursula Schwab's, um, is it World Fluster um, or something like that. And this wasn't in my colouring options for the spring season. However, um, at some point in the month, I had a procedure done for my eyes. Um, I have to go and do it again as well in April. But um, my eyes were blurred that particular day, were very sensitive to the light and I just didn't want to waste my entire day it's really silly because I couldn't I couldn't do anything with my eyes all blurred up and sensitive to light and so I couldn't watch tv I couldn't um I couldn't really see so I couldn't do any other household work I couldn't go out because my eyes were so sensitive and so I was just at home and I'm like there's no way I'm wasting a day that I'm not working no one's at home and I can't color so I forced myself to start coloring and in fact, I started colouring, I, I just said I'll do mindless colouring, so if I mess up, if I go out of that lines, it's absolutely fine, as long as I get coloured to paper, and I'm not just sitting around doing absolutely nothing, I couldn't even go on my phone, because I couldn't really see, and so I decided to pull this book out for mindless colouring, and um, obviously it's a very silly book to choose, because it's the tiniest book I have in my collection, and when your eyes are not working very well, that's probably not the best idea. You should probably go for the biggest of books. But I started that, and I realized this is really not working, so I put it aside and I pulled this one out um, for mindless coloring. But I actually really like how the page is turning out, and this is the page here. So now I've started taking my time. That particular day, what did I do? I think I'd just done basing with um, Derwent Ink Tents. Uh, so I decided, okay, the grass area, I can just base it. And I started basing the tree trunks um, and the sky. And so literally all I did that day when my eyes were sort of out of order was basing. And then I came in and started doing the proper pencil work later. And I actually really like how it's turning out. So like I said, base off Derwent Ink Tents for the grass, the tree trunks and for the sky and possibly for the clouds. And then I've gone over with my Albert Dura pencils dry. For the trees, there wasn't really much tree there. There were just the tree trunks and little leaves, which you can probably see still here, which I don't know what I'm gonna do about these ones, but 
little leaves just randomly dotted around and I didn't like that I wanted the page to look a little bit more full at the top with leaves or with you know what do you call it more filled up uh, trees and so I used my Artex acrylic markers um, I don't know if this was the actual color it's just here on the side so I pulled it up but the Artex acrylic markers um, which is the brush brush uh, tips and I created outlines and basing off um, the trees so in a green and in the pink if I'm not mistaken actually the green I may have used the simp tap acrylic um, arctic simp tap acrylic markers brush tips as well with the ones you have to tap on the back whereas these particular ones you don't have to activate at all no tapping um so yeah i basically based it so it's sort of covered up the little leaves that were there some parts of the tree trunks as well and just created that fullness of the foliage and i absolutely love it now so i like how that's looking and i started going over with the pencils and now i need to tackle i don't know how i'm going to do the bunnies but i'm not going to do it like realistic fur i'm just going to color it like um yeah like a picture book like a kid's cartoony book because of the colors i've chosen as well i think that will look quite nice um but yeah so i'm actually really liking it and i feel like there's a depth to the illustration but um yeah it's funny that i started this when i couldn't really see anything um but i'm glad i didn't mess it up because i'm quite enjoying it so that was ursula schwab's Walsh fluster and i think yeah that's the last rip and I'll go on to the completed pages. So, the first completed page I have to show you is from this book. It's an art therapy book, a really tiny one. So if I get out a Kirby, for example, it's a similar size to like Johanna Basford, for those of you who um, are more familiar with Kirby and Johanna Basford books. Um, so it's a really tiny book. Don't know why I picked that out when my eyes were not working, but there we go. And so the book is called Animal de la Forêt, and the artist is Caroline Allen. Um, but it's an art therapy book, so really good quality, lovely paper, nice illustrations. There are some pages I probably wouldn't tackle, and there are some that I would absolutely really enjoy. Like I did that one, and I've got a How I Color video on that with regards to using paint pens for coloring, uh, for basing, for painting on, and then just using some pencils to go over the top. And then I'd started this page again as a how I color video for the background, how to do a blurry effect or I attempted to do a blurry effect, um, trying to see if I could get um, the, the blurry effect that Chris Cheng tends to do so brilliantly and it's so hard and I'm nowhere close to hers but I'm glad I tried and I shared that with you guys to show you how I would attempt it. I think um, it does look blurry, but I think there's a lot of work still needed. But the idea is there. And then I hadn't colored the rest of the page. And I thought, yes, it looks spring-like. There's daffodils there. Um, and of course, uh, when my eyes were not working, I started coloring the smallest element on the page. And those were these tiny little tree bark, uh, tree, yeah, the bark of the tree, or what do you call them? The little twigs. Um, and then the leaves um, and then I realized yes this is not working I'm going to stop coloring this and I'll come back to it later but I'd already started enjoying it so I'm glad I finished it and I love how the fur of the squirrel turned out so I did put quite a bit of effort into that because yeah I still have to work on my fur um, but I think on this particular page it turned out quite nice and I used my Albrecht Dura pencils um, activated with water as well as dry I've used some glitter gel pens and the fur I've literally just done with my Albrecht Dura pencils and yeah, I quite like it. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad I finished that page. I like the completed illustration. They're such tiny little illustrations, but um, very enjoyable colouring on this paper. So really enjoyed that and I'm glad I finished it. So that was a whip for a while because I'd done it as a How I Colour video and then I never came around to finishing it. So. There we go. So that's my first completed page. Then my next one, if you guys have watched recently my completed pages in Kirby Roseanne's books, um, because I'm doing the series of all my completed pages ever 
that I've ever done as an adult colorist and um, I think I lasted it two years ago in 2022 when I first started the channel and since I'm coming up to my two-year anniversary for the channel um, I put a poll up and all of you were very eager to see my completed pages even though it's only been two years since I've shown them but yeah if you watched that particular video of the Kirby Rosans one you'll have seen that I completed the spread and I love how it's turned out so I've done this particular page as a colour along on the channel, a full colour along, and then I finished this page off, off camera and I love just seeing this entire spread done. So um, I've used Arctic soft pastels for basing a lot of the elements, the sky, the uh, stone or the rocks, the underwater, the water, and then I went over with my Albert Dura pencils, dry. I used some two yard paint pens. I used some Tombow Jewel brush pens. I've used some glitter gel pens ever so slightly on this orange yellow fish. Can't even catch them, they're so tiny. Lots of white uh, Posca, I think, paint pen. Um, and yeah, that's about it. And I love how it turned out. I'm so glad I spent my time doing this and finishing it off in my own time I just enjoyed the process I didn't feel like I had a I needed to rush because with color along sometimes you feel like okay I need to do it fast so the color along isn't too long and I want to get it out to you guys and things like that but when I sat down and did this page I just took my sweet time and did it in little batches um and yeah finished it and I love seeing it all done so that was Galapagos Penguins from Fragile World by Kirby Rosans. All done. All right. Then another completed page is in Nightingale Gals 2 by Vishan Ong. And she's it's a new series of books by Vishan Ong. Um, she's got Nightingales 1, 2, and 3. And I chose a page from this book. Now, this um, these books were sent to me. Um, to share with you guys by the artist or the artist's assistant, um, very kindly sent to me. And because I've never coloured any of Fi Shan Ong's work, I was quite intrigued. I did like her work and so I said, yes, I'll give it a shot. And I did do a portrait. And now you guys know I don't do portraits that often. But when I do them, I do enjoy it. And um, I did this particular page here. And I really like how it turned out. I just wanted to do like a bluish purple hair. Um, that's all I knew. And then I just worked with that. I have a lot of work still to do with skin. Lots to learn. Um, but I did in this instance try, yeah, alcohol markers. First time ever. So it is uh, very neat to me to work with alcohol markers for skin. So I had no idea what I was doing. and um, But I think it turned out okay. <laughs> um but yeah, I used alcohol markers, I used uh, for basing pretty much everything, and then I used my Albrecht Dura pencils over the top. Other than for the hair, which I think I used Black Widow pencil, and I used um, Pablo's, I think, because I didn't have the right colours I wanted um, for the hair. The colours in the polychrome, uh, the Faber-Castell, either the Polychromas or Albrecht Dura, are a lot more purple or a lot more blue. I didn't have something sort of in between. And so, yeah, I really wanted to get this sort of a shade of hair and I liked it. So I just used a combination of those, but then the rest of it is just my Albrecht Dura pencils over the alcohol markers. Um, so, yeah, really enjoyed that. I do like the other portraits. Like, I really like... There's some beautiful ones um, that I would want to tackle at some point. So yeah, I'm glad I got started on this book. And that is Night and Gals 2 by Vishan Ong. And I wanted to colour it to show you guys what her work looks like. I've not seen her work shared that much. Um, so it may help some people to visualise if it's a coloured illustration. Um, so yeah. All right, then. This page, I'm so glad it's done. Hannah Carlson's jewelry box. And you guys have seen this as a whip for a while. I'd once started it just as a background because I wanted to play with watercolor paints and I just didn't finish the page. And now I'm glad I'm done with it. Um, and I love how it's turned out. So yeah, the background is uh, watercolor paints, just 
again, playing around, trying to learn how to use watercolour paints. I've used some metallic watercolour paints as well. You can probably see the shine. And um, yeah, then I've just, if I even remember, because it's been a while now, I think I used Pablo's for these lighter leaves and for these flowers. I used, I think, the Artix um, Simptap acrylic markers for those little uh, curly leaves and then I went over a metallic gold and then uh, to cover up the black lines and then I went over with a pencil dry just to give a bit of shadowing and then I used my Arbic Dura pencils for the rest of it so for the deer that was what I think it took me a while to color this page because I knew I had to tackle the fur and I thought that's going to just ruin my page and I love how it was looking so far but I'm happy with how the fur turned out actually so still got a lot of work to do with fur but I am working on it and I do like how it turned out I, I don't think it's ruined the the page um so yeah I used my Arbit Dura pencils for that and then for all the detailing work the gold effects um these other leaves um and lots of glitter gel pen I think can you see the glitter gel pen um and yeah page is done and I really like it I haven't ironed the page or anything and it's pretty flat like you can still see slight wrinkling but once it's in the bookshelf again um it'll flatten out so I didn't need to iron it or anything so I'm really happy with that page um there was no bleed through just a little bit messy here but there was no bleed through otherwise so that's really good but I might, hopefully it flattens out, otherwise I might iron it a little bit just to get rid of the little bit of bumping when I come to colour this page because I may not enjoy that when I'm trying to colour on this page. I don't mind the sound or anything like that, but when I come to colour it, it might bother me. So I'll see how it flattens out in the bookshelf. But yeah, really glad that page is done and I love how it turned out. I haven't shared this on Instagram yet, actually. All right, um, kind of Carlson's jewellery box. Okay, not long to go. Um, then the next one I have is Diane Dufour's Siren du Monde. Um, and it's an art therapy book, so great quality. And it was very kindly sent to me as Happy Mail. Um, so thank you. Um, I've said thank you to you previously as well. Um, but it was re really nice of uh, you to send this to me and I love it. Um, lovely book. I don't have any of Diane DeForest's books, so I'm so glad I have this one and hopefully I'll get the other ones at some point. But I'm glad I finally got started on this particular book. And this is the page I did. This was a day where I did the background for the Dear page I just showed you in Hannah Carlson's book. And I felt like doing background, so I did the background for this one. I used Distressing for the Sky and I used Derwent Ink Tents for the Water. And um, other than that, I think I've used, yeah, I've used my Karen Dash Pablo pencils for the rest of the work. And I've activated, not activated, but I've blended it with the Zested Blend. And um, and I just used a Derwent Blender pen, which has sort of dried up. So I just dip it in my Zested and I use it to blend out so I used that and I really like how it's turned out I love the colors because they're colors I don't usually um get or tend to produce with my Albert Dura pencils even though it might be possible to but I just don't get around to um I get stuck on the same color combinations with my Albert Duras because I've been using them for so long so I don't like change it up so often so it's nice to use a different set of pencils and the only I love how my igloos turned out the only thing I'm not so keen on is this now I'd done the sky a while ago I started coloring everything and at the end of the page I thought oh the sky looks so plain um and I didn't know what to do and I should have just used my white ink and put in some clouds with my Winsor & Newton white ink but I decided to try and use um oil pastels not sure why but I did and uh yeah i just tried to do cloud effects with those it looks okay um it could have been better so i don't know if i ruined the page with that but um yeah it's okay <laughs> so yeah i was just playing around with the oil pastels with that but yeah i love how it's turned out very limited palette again um but i like how it's turned out and then i've got some glitter gel pens mainly the pentel hybrid duo metallics um and yeah, that's it.
I really enjoyed it. I did enjoy that. Again, like I already said, beautiful paper to work on. So just the process of colouring in a book with such lovely paper, is, it's really enjoyable. So Siren de Mont by Diane Dufour. Beautiful book. I look forward to colouring more in that book. Um, but I'm really um, eager to get some of her other books as well now. All right. The next one I have is my first ever Lulu Mayo colouring book. I don't have any of Lulu Mayo's books. Um, her, despite her illustrations being very um, adorable, naive, sort of like innocent, um, happy, I just found that the art style was not something I'd be able to tackle because um, a lot of white blank space, but I think this book has become a bit busier, something a bit more that I would like to enjoy. I would, I would enjoy coloring and not um, something that I'd have to worry about the backgrounds that much. Um, so a, a million baby animals. And so, yeah, I finally got a book of hers and I've done this page here and I like how it's turned out and I've done it as a full color along on the channel. So if I remember, I've put all the links in the description box below that I have to put. Um, but yeah, I'd put this as an option. Um, I'm not sure if it was this particular page, but I'd put this book as an option for uh, spring colouring options in my spring colouring uh, video. And quite a few of you said you'd like to see a colour along in it. So it was good because it made me get started. Otherwise, I think I would have chickened out because I've never coloured any of uh, Lulu Mayer's work. And I've seen such beautiful um, coloured versions of her work. And so it was a bit intimidating, but I'm glad I got started and I love how it turned out. It was fun. It was relaxed colouring for me. Nothing too um, complicated, nothing too busy. Um, so I did the background, the grass bit, as well as the sort of the top bit with soft pastels. Erased out circles using my Derwent electric eraser to create sort of the bokeh background. And I used my Albert Dura pencils then to darken up um, the, uh, the base, basically, to give it a bit more depth. And then um, the rest of the work I've done with Tombow Jewel brush pens and Albert Dura pencils. And I was, I, I'm sure I have seen in previous videos that people say they're not able to use watercolor pencils in Lulu Mayer's books, um, watercolor paints, which is why I didn't, tackle the background with the Albert Dura pencils activated with water because I was like what if it doesn't work there's no test pages in this book so I was like I'll just go in with soft pastels and see how things go I did end up using a bit of water with my Albert Dura pencils and I think it worked um, and I obviously with the Tombow Jewel brush pens I was using them off a palette and painting them on and it pretty much worked so it wasn't too bad so next time I'll try my arbiters a little bit more confidently um, with the water but I like how it turned out and I used some Thule Art paint pens, some glitter gel pens um, but yeah nice and colourful um, I didn't limit the number of colours I was using I'm glad I didn't go just for pink flowers. I did end up putting in some green flowers, but I really like how those, are they bluebells? I don't know, but I really like how they turned out. Um, those are my favorite on this page, but um, yeah, a fun page. And the bouquet background, I didn't try and attempt it with just the pencils. I did it with the soft pastels and then the pencils as well. Um, I don't think I have the patience for pencil backgrounds, um, but yeah, really enjoyed that. There is a color along on the channel for that particular page. My first ever Lulu Mayo's A Million Baby Animals. And I have a couple more pages tagged. So if I'm in the mood, I might colour some more in that book in the spring season. It's a very spring-like book because of all the baby animals, isn't it? All right. Now, the next one I have to show you is another colour along on the channel. Fabiana Atanasio's Mythographic Cosmic Spirit. I had started this, I think, in February, but then get around to finishing it. And um, I have now, and I love how it turned out. It was an uncoloured book. So it's another page coloured in an uncoloured book. So I didn't mention that for the other books, but there are quite a few actually that are uncoloured that I've finally, I've done a page in. So that was really nice. But yeah, I really enjoyed this. I literally felt like using my Albert Dura pencils and that's what I did. I did the background with Albert Duras, activated with water, went over with the pencils again. Um, I used a lot of paint, white paint pen and white gel pens for the flowers. I... Um, 
yeah, I did a lot of activating of my arbiturus and just went over with the pencils dry. I don't think I can remember anything else. Um, but I felt like just using my arbiturus and that's predominantly what I've used. And then you have glitter gel pens. Um, I'm sure you can see that. Yeah, there we go. The Empress. And I love how it turned out. Again, I'm happy with how my fur turned out. Still have a lot of work to do with fur, but I'm actually happy with the three fur pages I've done this month. And the skin is nice. Um, I don't have that many varieties of skin that I can color yet. Again, like I said, that's another thing that I'm still working on. Eventually I will. I just need to do more portraits to start working on the skin. But yeah, um, I like how the fur turned out. So I'm really happy with this page. I love the colors and it's a nice start to the uncolored book. So that was Mythographic Cosmic Spirit by Fabiana Atanasio. A full color along is available on the channel for that page. And the last colored page, completed page I have is in a new book, which is not yet released. This is a pre-release copy of Stratton Peterson's Luna coloring book. And um, this will be available in April on Amazon. And um, Lomart, which are the publishers, sent this book to me very kindly, a pre-release copy of the book. I like her previous uh, book, uh, Nature's Magic which I absolutely love and I really enjoyed colouring in it. So I'm so happy to be able to get this in my collection too. And I really wanted to jump in straight away again. And this is the page I did. And um, when I did the flip through, I think this was a work in progress at the time. So I'm glad I finished it so you guys can see the finished version. And yeah, this page just drew me in and I absolutely loved colouring it. I try to use different mediums. I use my Tombow Jewel brush pens. I've used my Arbitura pencils activated with water as well as dry. I've used my... Derwent ink tents, pencils, and then yeah, that's it. Paint pen, some glitter gel pens, and I love how this page has turned out. Um, so yeah, I've really really enjoyed coloring that. Um, Lomart, their their books are of good quality, and yeah, I've just enjoyed coloring Stratton Peterson's work, and I love that she has a description of the illustrations um so you can have a read so on pages where maybe you don't know what an animal is or you don't know what you know plants there are for example here i'm not very good with my flowers flowers um so it's nice to be able to read it up and see okay that's a what is that that's a goldfinch i'm assuming um and primrose flowers so i can look it up and then know what colors i might want to use so it does help with a bit of inspiration as well but I love how this page turned out and um, yeah, using the different mediums. And I like how my rope turned out. Really liked that, working on that. Um, so yeah, that is my last completed page for March 2024. And um, yeah, I really enjoyed my colouring. I did so many uncoloured books this um, month, which was great. So I did that one, that was uncoloured, that was uncoloured, that was uncoloured um so yeah okay some of them are new books like that one as well was uncolored so it was nice um you know doing all these uh uncolored books as well so yeah my only goal for 2024 is to make sure that i don't end the year with more uncolored books than i started so that's the aim i'm not stopping myself from buying coloring books or anything but i need to make sure that at the end of the year I don't have more on colored books than I did in January. So, um, yeah, I'll be trying to tap into all those uncolored books every month. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed my coloring. What's my favorite page? I think I did like the mythographic mis uh, cosmic spirit one. I was really happy with how the fur turned out. I really enjoyed coloring in Stratton Peterson's and I absolutely love that this page is completed and I didn't ruin it with the fur. But I think maybe the mythographic Cosmic Spirit is my favourite. What is your favourite? Let me know in the comments below. All right, guys, I hope you guys had a good colouring month for March and I will be back with you guys again soon. Until then, take care. Thank you for watching and see you on the next one. Bye-bye.